People sling the word autophagy around like a ping pong in competition. But if you were to ask yourself, what is autophagy? Would you know? Okay, maybe you know it's the degradation of cellular material, but how does it happen? And no, I'm not talking about you fasting, although we'll get to that too. I'm asking within your cells, how do they know to engage and increase autophagy? Well, that's what I'm going to explain to you. As a bona fide autophagy researcher, I'm going to walk you through how your actions, like fasting, cause autophagy. Let's take fasting as a scenario. You fast for a few days and your cells activate their autophagy machinery. And that happens first and foremost due to changes in your hormones, growth factors, and a shift in your metabolites in your bloodstream. So hormones like cortisol will increase, insulin will decrease. Meanwhile, growth factors like insulin like growth factor will reduce. Also, molecules like glucose reduce and more fats are taken up by your cells for energy. This ultimately signals the inside of your cells of a low energy environment. What does that mean? It means there's a shift in the cellular environment, reducing the molecules that are high in energy, like adenosine triphosphate, ATP and increasing the molecules that are lower in energy, like adenosine diphosphate and adenosine monophosphate, ADP and AMP. This shift in the ratio of ATP and ADP-AMP is sensed by a master protein within the cells called AMPK. AMPK is stimulated to be more active when low energy molecules like AMP bind to it. So the cell has an activated AMPK protein, which then does a few things. It inhibits the mTOR master protein, which is tightly tied to growth of the cell. Second, it activates another protein called FOXO. FOXO will then go into the cell's nucleus and tell it to produce more autophagy related proteins like Beclin. Thirdly, AMPK will then activate Beclin, either directly or indirectly, by activating another protein known as ULK. But the bottom line is, Beclin is active. Now, autophagy begins, but here's where I'd like to get a bit of help from a scientific review on autophagy. It states, there are five key stages. A, the phagophore formation or nucleation. B, ATG5 to ATG12 conjugation, interaction with ATG16L and multimerization at the phagophore. C, LC3 processing and insertion into the extending phagophore membrane. D, capture of random or selective targets for degradation. And E, fusion of the autophagosome with the lysosome, followed by a proteolytic degradation by lysosomal proteases of engulfed molecules. Did you catch all that? No? Color me shocked. That's because researchers write for other researchers, and that's why I exist to serve you, to break this down without losing too much detail. Okay, so Becklin has been activated by AMPK, directly or indirectly. What happens next? This Becklin protein interacts with a series of other proteins to create a complex, a grouping of proteins, at a particular section of the cell known as the endoplasmic reticulum. At the endoplasmic reticulum, they pinch off a bit of the endoplasmic reticulum known as nucleation. This nucleation creates a vesicle known as the phagophore, the birthing of the autophagy machinery. From here, the cell has a series of autophagy-related proteins, abbreviated as ATG proteins, and they mature the phagophore from a little baby phagophore to a young adult phagophore that just graduated college. They grow up so fast. These ATG proteins essentially give the phagophore structure and the potential to capture different components of the cell. But the phagophore needs one more thing, a protein known as LC3. LC3 is floating around the cell and the ATG proteins will process or cut the LC3 protein into its mature form, known as LC3-2. 
LC32 can now embed itself into the phagophore along with some other proteins and create the mighty mature autophagosome. This mature autophagosome now has a job. Find unwanted components of the cell and scoop them up. The autophagosome has expanded to be large enough to even envelop entire organelles like mitochondria or large groupings of misfolded proteins until eventually it encircles them completely into vesicle. Finally, the autophagosome filled with cellular trash will merge with another vesicle known as the lysosome. The lysosome exposes the interior of the autophagosome to a series of destructive enzymes, which cut up and degrade the captured components of the autophagophore. Although, at this point, they are fused into an even mightier autolysosome. And these broken pieces of organelle and protein, although it isn't just limited to those, then get re-released inside the cell to be ejected or reused by the cell. And that is how autophagy occurs when you fast. Keep in mind, this is still a simpler version than everything that happens, but without getting caught into the details here, it'll do. That said, if you'd like a greater education on fasting and autophagy, then hop on over to my series on these topics. I'll speak to you there.